What are you going to be watching for as Carol's cross-examination continues tomorrow? Right. So the first thing I'll point out is we don't actually get to watch this in real time because the federal courts still don't permit cameras in the courtroom, something that I hope will change in the next few years. But we are getting really fabulous reporting from reporters in the courtroom and for pe from people who are tweeting the examination real time from overflow courtrooms. And so what we'll be able to see will be, I think, two things. One, how well does Carol hold up? Is there any moment where there's a lapse in her story? So far, she has been remarkably consistent. There's no reason to believe that that will change or that Takapina will rattle her in any way. And then the other thing to look for is whether Takapina really crosses the line where he attacks Carol in such a vicious way that the jury can't get that out of their minds and begins to really view her with the sort of legitimacy that can't be overcome by any case that the defense puts on. Adding to all of this, Trump's legal team, they still haven't said whether or not he's going to testify. I wonder what you think it is that they're waiting for. Right. So he won't testify if he's smart. This is a tough case for him to take the stand in. But it's also impossible for him to win, most likely, if he doesn't testify. You know, we all know, I mean, it's an understatement at this point that Trump loves the center stage, loves having the microphone in his hand. He may believe that the opportunity to testify is irresistible and that he can talk his way out of this case. But likely it's all over but the shouting in the sense that the jury will find for care and the only real issue here will be the amount of damages that they award her. I, I do want to ask you before I let you go, Joyce, you know, at, at the White House Correspondents' Dinner last night, comedian Roy Wood Jr., he, he took aim at many things, including the Supreme Court's legitimacy crisis. Take a listen to what he said. This man bought a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> do you understand how rich you have to be to buy a Supreme Court, a black one, on top of that? <laughs> see Clarence Thomas, but he belongs to billionaire Harlan Crow, and that's what an NFT is. You have, you have that. You have the Chief Justice's wife drawing scrutiny. Who do you look to for solutions here, Joyce? Well, look, I'm finally just grateful that I now understand what an NFT is. But the reality here is that resolving the Supreme Court's ethical conundrum is going to be a difficult issue. You know, the justices have just issued this letter that all nine of them signed. And essentially it says, really, you can trust us. And for Americans right now, the, the mood in the country is, really, we can't just mm -hmm. trust the justices. And so it may end up being up to Congress to come up with new laws like the laws that apply to other federal judges. But that is a very difficult needle to be threaded because there are issues involving not violating the separation of powers that get tied up. It's a tough issue, but the court, more than anyone else, has at, at its heart the interest in restoring the public's confidence in its integrity. And it's why you see the Senate Judiciary Committee considering taking matters into their own hands.